Okay, this video is a continuation of the comparator circuit uh, video. And this is just the comparator basic. So you can see this is the same circuit. Uh, I've got voltage source over here. Here's my voltage divider with the potentiometer output for VN. Here's my voltage divider with, for the uh, reference voltage as well as the positive feedback. And it's a little switch to turn the uh, positive feedback on and off. And here's my output LED. This is actually just a diode. Um, it, the, there is an LED, but it's just kind of a pain to work with. Uh, in other words, I haven't figured it out yet. So I'm using MATLAB Simscape, which is a toolbox within MATLAB Simulink. Now, there's uh, there's all kinds of uh, elect electronic simulation software out there, uh, various SPICE models, uh, SPICE software. Um, and one of the, 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 so there are some advantages and disadvantages to using MATLAB Simscape. Now, one of the, I should say, one of the disadvantages first is that uh, it, it has basically just most of the uh, your common components. It doesn't have, for example, like all the SPICE models for, let's say, all of um, Texas Instruments components. Like if you want a specific battery management system and you want to incorporate that into your uh, model, they're not going to have that uh, part. So if you need to get that level of uh, simulation, you might want to use a, a SPICE model. But in this case, um, but some of the advantages of using Simscape is that it's uh, multi-domain. So it's uh, so Simulink is multi-domain, uh, but uh, Simscape is uh, you can use all of the Simulink mod, mod blocks. And so here I've got all the scopes. I've got a gain and a couple uh, constants, a couple parts from the dashboard, and you can incorporate those into an electrical circuit, and you can actually. Uh, connect them to uh, like a mechanical circuit. So if you have like an electric motor, you can uh, attach a certain amount of inertia to the output uh, shaft. You can attach a gear block system, uh, various uh, other kind of mechanical subsets. And you actually can connect that to a 3D model and uh, actually give that mass. Uh, you can actually incorporate uh, a thermal study into, for example, the, the resistors, um, various other components. Um, uh, for like motor, uh, motors and uh, semiconductors, you can actually output, uh, let's say you want to do a thermal study you're doing a power supply. You want to not only uh, test the electrical system, but you want to uh, make sure that you're using the proper heat sized heat sink. And so you can actually model that in Simscape. Um, so there are a bunch of advantages to using MATLAB Simscape, but there are a couple little Things you need to understand first about uh, uh, Simulink as well as Simscape models. Now, the Simulink that you might be familiar with, they uh, have the directionality to it. So you can see they all have arrows. And so these are all the Simulink models. So Simulink models use a unidirectional signal. So you can think of it as it's basically like a unitless number. And so that's uh, basically a mathematical model. It also makes a difference for how MATLAB actually does the calculation for the uh, equations you set up. So for example, uh, let's say I have just a couple mathematical blocks here. Uh, it would, uh, Simulink would calculate the equation for this and then we'll move on, calculate the equation for that, and then do it in a very linear fashion. On the other hand, Simscape does not do it linearly. Like here, here you can see the uh, Simscape model electrical are blue. And there is no arrow for in or out, so these are actually bidirectional signals. And the uh, you can uh, the plus, plus and minus on the resistor is just for the current flowing. So you actually measure a positive. So if you measure uh, current, you want to measure it in this direction. Uh, it does. Uh, it's not saying that this resistor has uh, polarity. So the uh, MATLAB Simulink actually solves. Instead of a, in a linear fashion, it does a simulate, it solves the, all of the equations simultaneously. So we need an, uh, a more complicated, more capable solver. So that's what this little block is down here. So this is the solver configuration. This can be uh, set up differently for your needs, but we're not really going to get into that. We just want to get a, a basic uh, electrical simulation working. I might do future videos that actually incorporate uh, thermal as well as uh, some mechanical. I might want to. Uh, I plan on doing some videos on building a electronic uh, motor uh, motor circuit, electronic driver circuit for a motor, and so I'll want to make sure that the uh, 
transistors can actually handle the load so that the, the thermal output, you know, determine if I need a heat sink or not, or what size heat sink I need. Another thing to keep in mind, since these are two, so they're, they're compatible, but you need to actually have some adapter blocks. Uh, you need to, in order to control, um, convert a Simulink model to a Simscape, something that Simscape uh, solver can actually work with, you need various adapters. Uh, so things like this, this is a, if I can click on it, this is a Simulink to physical signal converter. So you can think of this as a unitless number and it has to convert it to a unit number. And that's a, maybe a little bit of a simplification, but it kind of gets the point across. Uh, so the Simscape models, they actually have the, a couple, like you can actually look at this potentiometer. There's a couple different connections, different ports. So uh, on the actual device, the, the flow of energy, so that you think of like current and voltage, this is uh, the connections are what's called a conserving port and this is uh, considered a, a signal port so it's kind of a little bit more like Simulink but it's not so like you know this is an arrow shows directionality and it's your you want to input a signal to it but it's still a Simscape signal and it's not a Simulink so you need this converter and same thing over here is your output your your voltage is going to be a signal so it's not going to be energy but here this voltage is actually energy and it's not signal so these are not compatible to each other. You wouldn't hook up a voltage uh, to a signal, like it won't actually allow you. So just a quick example, I wanna show some of this uh, kind of cross domain aspects. So for those who are not as familiar with uh, Simulink, uh, we'll actually get through the an example. We're actually going to completely build this circuit from scratch, and I'll show you where, all, where you can get all the components, what some of the differences are. And, uh, but I just wanna show some of this idea of this uh, multi-dimensionality <clears throat> so there are this is one of the things that might be a little confusing so if you want uh, there's a couple ways you can find models uh, one of the more familiar ways is to click the library browser up at the top and that brings up your you know your commonly used uh, simulink models so you can have your scope constants uh, various other uh, blocks so to get the uh, simscape just click down here and so there are technically two places to get electric models. So you can actually go to the foundational library and click on the electric and then electric elements. So these are going to be like your very basic components. Uh, so this is where I've, uh, so we can actually pull in a resistor from here. And this is gonna be the simple model. This is, well, what is what I call the simple model. So if we double click on that, oh. So if we double click on that, it just has a parameter, it just has resistance and variables as cold, uh, current and voltage. Now, if you're just gonna build a really simple model, you're not really, you don't really care about having a thermal port uh, or any other parameters, you can go with that. But as a habit, I actually like to go, I, like, I don't like to use the uh, foundational models. I actually like to go to Simscape Electrical. I can go to uh, click on the passives. So this is where you can get a bunch of the other models. So this is where I got the potentiometer, uh, and this is where I get the, uh, the resistor. So if we click on this particular resistor, and you compare it to the one we just opened, so it has resistance, but it also has tolerance. So a lot of the resistors in reality, they're not going to be an exact, always spot on value. There's going to be some tolerance. That's a little gold band at the end of the carbon resistors you usually use, uh, you might use in the lab. So we can actually have a five volt or a five percent tolerance on the resistor. So whenever I type in a one K, it's going to be that plus or minus five percent. Now I can also uh, I can say a random tolerance, and then I can choose either uniform or Gaussian. So Gaussian is going to be that like little blip. So your, your majority is going to fall within a certain within a um, uh, one uh, one standard deviation, and then it, you know it uh, progressively drops off. Uh, or you can just just choose a uh, uniform. So it's just you know. It's fairly random. Uh, it also has various operating limits. Uh, for example, a lot of the labs, a lot of the resistors we use in lab, are gonna be like a half watt. So you can actually set your uh, your power rating to a half watt if that's what you're actually using in the circuit, and you can actually test your circuit to see if it's you're running too much current through it or too much voltage, and then uh, if you're running too much power through it, it might just uh, you know pop the resistor. So you can use that or not. 
And there's all kinds of others you can use. You can enable faults. Uh, I haven't really played around with this much. Uh, but you can use, <clears throat> but there's just a bunch of other uh, noise. You can actually throw in thermal characteristics of it. And so you can actually hear, like for example, uh, I've, uh, you can actually, it doesn't automatically come up with the thermal port. So you just have to right click the model. And you go up to Simscape and you go to block choices. So uh, the, the default is, is to not show thermal thermal port. Let's see if I can just move that wire. Just kidding. So here is just your basic resistor with the uh, all the other uh, options, all the other parameters. And so you can actually go up here, click Simscape, block choices, and then show the thermal port. So you can actually see there's a difference in color. So here this one's orange, and so thermal is going to be, yes, yeah, this is kind of an orange. Thermal is going to be, so I can't actually uh, take a wire from here and connect, connect it to anything other than uh, an orange port. So another little trick that you might not know in uh, MATLAB and Simscape is that if you want to start a wire in a wire, like you, you can't left click it and then pull a wire, but if you uh, uh, left click it and then right click it, just kidding, if you right click it and hold down, you'll actually draw, drag a wire right out here. So this actually won't allow me to connect to anything outside of its domain. So the orange is the domain. So it'll let me connect here, it won't, collect, won't collect, let me collect to green, which is the mechanical domain, only to orange. And for example, uh, also, here we have, so this is the, yeah, so this is the conserving port. So this is what I was talking about that has the energy. And over here you see this, this device, this is a rotational sensor. This has uh, signal ports. So here this is a, uh, this particular port is the rotational speed. And I'm connecting that to with a um, uh, converting block. Uh, this is gonna be a physical system to Simulink converter. And I'm connecting that to an oscilloscope to actually output the RPM. So this is a little motor and this also has an optional thermal port. So if you want to test that your motor is um, actually going, if your electrical system is capable of driving this motor to rotate, you know, this is a gear ratio box. This one's just set up to 520. This is a little inertia. So maybe on the output, this is the, in, this is the input shaft. This is the output shaft. And so maybe you have, um, it's, you might actually want to test this under a load. So you've got your system has some amount of inertia to it. Then you want to actually measure out uh, what the uh, actual speed of the motor shaft is based off of the input of your circuit. And here we have also, this is a uh, N-channel MOSFET. This also has an optional uh, thermal port. So this is gonna be a conserving port. So I could actually just, let's say I wanna connect that to that. For some reason, they're sharing heat sink. I don't know why they would. Um, so you could, in th uh, theory, you can take this. So this is a, uh, this is actually the um, motor that's found under the Simscape electrical. Uh, it's actually electromechanical. So this has the electric on one side, the mechanical on the other. Uh, this is just a simple rotational uh, rotational electromechanical device. So this is going to be like the simple version. This is, was found under the foundational library. Uh, so we really don't want that. So you could actually build a system that uh, maybe this is your uh, MOSFET to drive the potentiometer. You've got some input control system. And maybe you're uh, taking some readings off of this rotational sensor and you can build, you can use Simulink models or you can use Simulink blocks to build a PID control system. And that actually drives the electrical circuit, which drives the motor. So you can actually build a full closed loop system that has the, uh, the PID Simulink models, the electrical Simscape models and mechanical Simscape models to fully test the, your uh, electromechanical device. All right, I think that's enough of me jibber jabbering about the uh, Simscape and what, all the things that you can do. So we're gonna actually just go ahead and dive right in. We're going to build, rebuild this circuit. We're gonna do it one part at a time. And uh, hopefully I actually uh, give a little bit more detail into the parts themselves and the Simscape, how things are connected and why. And hopefully you also come away thinking that Simscape is actually a pretty useful technology and you can actually use this in uh, most of your circuits. Uh, most of your projects for simulation. All right, here I have opened up MATLAB. I'm using uh, 2020A, and uh, I'm not actually going to do anything in this window just yet. 
So I'm going to go up and I'm going to click on Simulink. So I'm just going to start a blank Simulink window. So you can, I always like to go into start a blank model. They do have some templates for Simscape. For example, I could go in here and click electrical. But they've got a bunch of these notes that you end up having to delete. And they've got a, a couple models that you really don't need necessarily in your circuit. But you can always just import these. So I always, just, I find it just more convenient just to put it in a blank model. And I know what I want. And it's just, it's just more straightforward. So until you get to the point of knowing what the actual blocks are called, what just by memory, you can always go up to uh, the library browser. So we're going to just slide this over here. And uh, let's just close that out. So this is the, if you've used Simulink before, these are going to be uh, a lot of the familiar blocks. So we're going to need scopes. In this particular circuit, we're going to use the constant. We're going to use the scope and we're going to use a gain. Um, yeah, but we'll import those as we need it. All of the Simscape blocks are going to be down here. And again, we don't want to use the foundational blocks. We want to use the Simscape electrical blocks. So the foundational blo library is just the very basic blocks, basic models. And so for testing more real systems, we want to use the uh, more real and more accurate, I should say, to reality components. So we're going to start off with, actually, we want a voltage source. So we're going to need a DC voltage source, so which is this guy. And we can just drag that guy into our window. And it's going to ask me what the voltage should be. Oh, I moved it. So we're just going to move it over here. We can always double click it and we can change characteristics. I don't want any AC voltage, so I'm just going to click this type 9. And I don't want it to be noisy, so that's disabled. And we're just going to click OK. Now, I also want every elect every simulation software always needs to have a, a reference voltage, uh, actually explicitly stated, as opposed to like a battery. And then you know it just assumes that your your minus sign on the the battery is the ground. You still always need to put a ground symbol, a reference voltage, and that's the exact and that's the same thing that Simscape wants. So a lot of those are found under the connectors and references. And we want an electrical reference. So we're going to just go ahead and drag that guy in. And we're going to put a little distance there. Now we also need that solver block. So we can go to the utilities and import this guy in. And again, this is this is just a little piece of technology that allows the uh, simulation. So it's a more complex solver that will allow MATLAB to solve the system of equations simultaneously for your circuit. And to connect these together, we just uh, left click and hold, drag that down. So we can connect the wire from here to the wire, but we can also right click and hold the wire and drag from there. So this is one of those things that it's a really minor point, but every once in a while, it, it's you want to be able to do that. And the documentation in MATLAB is just not that helpful sometimes. All right, so let's uh, go over here and we're going to build the first resistor network. So this is just going to be the series of resistors with the potentiometer in the middle. So we can go down to passives and we're going to import, not that one. So we want to import this resistor. And here we want this to be, actually, I don't want to, uh, I don't really like typing this in here. Uh, sometimes I get it wrong. I'll type in 100 when I mean 100K. And I mean to go back in here and change the value. So I always like to go back in here and change it to, like this one's going to be 4.7. And need to make sure that I change the units to kilo ohms. And I also want this facing vertically. So I'm going to hit Control R. And that rotates it. And then Control Shift R rotates it counterclockwise. So Control R clockwise, Control Shift R counterclockwise. So control R. Let's uh let's actually make this a little move this over. Nope. Move that guy over to the edge. Gives ourselves a little bit of space. I want to add here a, a control knob and then a little button so we can actually control the uh, potentiometer and then we can control whether we have the positive feedback or not. And then so I want this exact same resistor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press and hold the control button and then left mouse click and just drag right down. 
That's just a quick way. I don't want a connection. Silly guy. I don't. Uh, so that's just a real quick, easy way. Instead of like you know, right clicking, copy, and then paste. It's just a real fast way to do it. And right, so we also want a potentiometer. So this is the potentiometer I want. So we're gonna move this guy in here. And uh, again, I don't want to add the the resistance value. I'm gonna actually double click it. So I'll click that, and then Control R. And then I actually want this mirrored, so I'll control I uh, inverts it. And I can just scroll that in, roll that into place. So now you can see this is the conserving port and this is the signal port. So this is going to be, uh, this is going to uh, actually, <clears throat> wait, how does that actually work? No, actually, I, I got that wrong. I wanted to, I want this W down. I mean, it doesn't really matter. But I want to invert, invert, just kidding. So the W is the wiper. So this is going to be just like you know, the three ports of your, of a regular physical potentiometer. So this is the, the fixed resistance value. And this is the wiper. So this is going to be the third middle leg out of the potentiometer. And this is actually just going to be the signal. So if I want to actually, uh, uh, yeah. So this is the signal and this is, it says it's going in. So actually, I want to want to rotate that in this direction. Invert. Yeah. So I, I want it in this orientation, and so I want my signal coming up here, just to, out of the way, and then I want my actual voltage output. So the way you control the this the you know the position of the wiper across the res, the, the resistor is by inputting uh, a, a signal into here. So we're just going to slide this into place, slide it into place. And then we also need, so I can just go over here, control and hold and left mouse button and just slide that over. Uh, I can also, uh, if, <clears throat> if I haven't actually put this component in there, I can also type, uh, so I just left click in the field once and I can type electrical re reference, electrical, I can spell it correctly, lec. Well, reference and see it's already kind of auto completing anticipating what I want so I can just uh, hit enter and so I've got another one we're I'm gonna need one somewhere else so we'll just kind of leave this one off to the side so there's just multiple ways of actually dragging the, the components you need in so we've got all our, our electrical simscape models so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, gonna start connecting wires nope so you can see it now I wanted you up further so now I can't, it won't let me connect the conserving wire or conserving port to the signal port because they're, they're not compatible. So it wants conserving port to conserving port. And you can see if I click it once, you can see all the other conserving ports uh, highlight. And let me just go ahead and click that. Now I need a way to control the potentiometer. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually gonna go over to here to my uh, library browser, and I'm gonna go up to the Simulink models. I'm gonna go to the dashboard. So I can scroll down until I find the knob and drag that in. So this is just, we're gonna slide it over there. So now I need to link this to something that will send this in. So I need a constant. So I'm gonna go back up to my Simulink blocks, drag in a constant. And now this is there's no actual physical connection to this so what I do is double click it and then it's going to ask me to select the block to link to it and I just click that it says constant value and I click connect and click OK. I'm actually going to change this so it doesn't say constant and I want to say pot. So now this is a simulink and I want to go to a simscape model and for that I need a converter. So we can go back down to the Simscape models, go to Utilities, and drag in. So I want to go from Simulink to Physical Systems, so Simulink-PS. And just drag this one over here, and I'll put it right there. And so you can actually see this will allow me to connect. So if I, if I didn't have this, let's just say we'll just push this off to the side. 
So if I thought, oh, I want to connect, no, well, it's not going to let me connect. So this is one of those frustrations, people who just start using it, they don't understand uh, that there is a difference in the software between these models. And the key is this converter. It has to do with uh, what the signals are and, and how MATLAB actually does the calculations. So we just connect that and you can see it gives you a nice visual reference. So this is a solid triangle to a, what I would like a hollow triangle. Then you can see the uh, signal port, the physical signal port is also the same empty triangle. So now it should allow us to connect to there. Eh, I don't like that there. Let's put this, I don't know. That looks a little bit better. So now I've got my voltage source, I've got my ground reference, I've got a, a potentiometer connected to this, so if I double click that, I should change. Uh, so now it's referring to pot, to pot. Now I've got my first basic uh, resistor network. So I could, let's actually just do this. So one of the things that's really helpful is to just build your system incrementally. It's always nice to get your first components working so you know that this is outputting correctly so you know you have all your correct resistor values and so whenever you actually then make changes and something doesn't work you know it's only it's somewhere in the new stuff you added so we're going to uh, we want to actually just connect a, a scope up to that so I need a scope to actually see the signal so we can go up to commonly used blocks and we'll just drag in a scope we'll put this uh, let's put this all the way over here because that's where we're going to want it later. Uh, number of ports, we're just going to keep that one. And <clears throat> so again, this is a conserving port from a Simscape model going to a Simulink model. So that's not going to let me connect it. So I need a converter block. So we're going to, uh, so instead of actually going back and forth, uh, since we know this is Simulink to dash PS, uh, we know the other one is going to be PS to simulate but well just for completion we'll uh, go back here so it's simscape utilities so physical physical signal to simulate converter or again we can just click on the field and do ps dash and it's already going to anticipate what i need and we can just move that well i'll just move that real close automatically connects and then now see and again we still have a compatibility issue because this is a conserving port and this is a signal port. So we actually need what's called a voltage sensor. So just like in reality, we need a, a device to actually sense what the uh, signal is. So we can go to, this is again under Simscape Electrical Source uh, Sensors and Transducers. Scroll down all the way, it's nice in alphabetical order. And we can just import the voltage sensor. And here again, you can see it has conserving ports and a signal port. And uh, since I don't want wires crossing, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to press Control I to invert. That just flips it around. So here I want to connect to that and this I can connect right to the reference. Now I've got a signal port to a signal port. And that should work. So everything's connected. We've got our system. Now I want to be able to do this in real time. So if I have, let's just say, uh, I want to run this for 10 seconds and not like 10 sec seconds simulated. I actually want 10 seconds real time. So if I, I don't have that set right now. So if I just click run, so once it's done compiling, Assuming it does give me an error for this non-connected reference. Yeah, simulation's already done. So I can click on the scope. And it's just going to give me a constant value. So I actually want to, you know what, while we're here, oh, never mind. So I actually want to be able to change this potentiometer in real time during this 10 seconds so I can actually get an output basically like a real scope. Now this is not something I don't think is native to, uh, or doesn't come automatically, you need to actually add an add-on. So in order to import that, we need to go back to our MATLAB window, and we want to go up to the top here and click add-ons. And this will open up the uh, large library of add-on software that other people have made, or Simscape, or uh, yeah, the people at MathWorks has, have made. So up in the search window up at the top, I want to enter Simulink 
desktop real time. And I want this particular add-on. So simulate desktop real time. Just click this, then add it. Just follow the normal instructions. Uh, you might have to restart the software or something like that. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and close this. And so once you've installed that, now you need to actually uh, add on an extra little piece of software, but we're gonna do this from the function. And we type in S-L-D-R-T-K-E-R-N-E-L. Yeah. <laughs> NEL space dash install. Uh, I've already installed it, so if I hit enter, it's going to say, Hey, you've already installed it. Do you want to reinstall it? Uh, but uh, you should, it should just go ahead and automatically. It'll ask if you want to install, you'll just click Y for yes. Here, I'm going to click N for no. And, uh, and then it will re automatically install it. So, what that does, if I go back to this, so what this does is that over here, it open, you can uh, click on the Simscape, or rather Simulink desktop real time. So this gives you a block that you can actually input called the real time sync. So you just bring this in, and you don't need to connect it to anything. So we'll just we'll just kind of shove it over there, just out of the way. And so this with the add-on with that extra little piece of software, and then by importing this, this will allow me to run in actual real time so this is really helpful for if you want to control different parameters to the circuit uh, so like we want to actually change the potentiometer and watch what happens in real time and i also want this to uh the scope to pop up automatically so i'm going to go to settings so i double click the scope open up settings this underneath the main i want to open at simulation start so we'll just click that so whenever the simulation starts this window will automatically pop up and that's actually going to pop up. Uh, we'll set it up. It's going to be in my way. So we'll just slide it over here. So whenever this pops up, it's going to pop up in this particular section. So, oops, dang it. Nope. So obviously, if it pops up here, then you know I can't get to the potentiometer, so I got to just move it over there. So we're going to just to prove that it works. And close that. And we're going to click run. And we'll see the simulation will start. No, should have minimized that. No. Well, I don't know what happened there. Let's just try that again. That's uh, so we can make this a little bit smaller so we can actually see the full scope when it pops up. I'm going to click run. That should pop up and that's being a pain. Why is that being a pain? Okay, so I forgot to change this to 10 kilo ohms. Change that, make sure that these are also 4.7K. This is 4.7K, and this should be nine volts. All right, let's try that again. Why must you test my patience? Let's try actually setting the from zero to one. That might be part of the problem. So we'll click run again. There we go. Alright, so that was the issue. Now, I forgot to change this from 0 to 1, so this is basically, I want to control this from, uh, it's basically like a, a built-in multiplier. 
And so that gives me the full range of operation uh, given these upper and lower limits. So that is the uh, basics of uh, getting our system, our first step to our circuit working. So let's close that. We're going to expand this out. All right, so now let's, uh, let's actually move this a little lower. So that's going to be my V minus. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is we're just going to throw in the comparator so I can bring up the Simscape models. And that's going to be under electrical, integrated circuits, and comparator. Just drag that in. And let's see, let's put this guy right about there. Now I can also, again, since I already know resistors are just resistors, I can just type, rather click, resistor, so electrical, passive, and I don't want that, and control R, I want this to be 10 kilo ohms, so this is just setting up, oops, missed, 10 kilo ohms. So I'm just setting up the uh, voltage divider reference. And so this is just going to be a 10K and a 10K. And again, I can press and hold the control button and press and hold the left mouse button and then just drag it down. And I think that automatically connects. And so I can add, uh, and again, just as a bonus, so you can actually right click and hold and drag the wire down from the other wire. Uh, and so that connects that. I also want to make sure this is connected to the uh, positive voltage. And then we're going to just drag this guy up here and whack him in there. So now I also want my voltage. Uh, so this is going to be my reference voltage or my non-inverting non input. I'm just going to call V plus. And so I also want to drag my input voltage or V in, which is actually comes from my potentiometer into that. And uh, I want my V out. Also, I need another resistor. I'm going to left click, I'm going to type resistor, passive, and control R to rotate it. Nope, just kidding. Control R to rotate it. And I'm going to double click. And this is the one that should be 470 ohms. 470 ohms. Click OK. So this is going to be my output. So right click, drag it over. So I want a an LED. It would be nice if I, I could probably hook up a circuit that actually will blink and uh, blink a light so it's on and off. But yeah, I'm feeling a little lazy. So I'm actually going to go to the browser and I want semiconductors and converters. And I actually don't want this diode. I think uh, last time I was doing the circuit, it was giving me a, uh, I think it was giving me a problem. So I'm actually going to go to foundational electrical electrical elements, and I'm going to import this this diode. So this is just a, a simple diode. I just need a particular voltage drop to, I'm basically going to simulate the LED. So the LED I was using was a purple one or pinkish purple. I had a forward voltage drop of 2.4 volts. And that's all I really want. And then I'm going to control I to invert yeah, because I want it to be on a certain uh, reference. So that I'm actually going to give myself a little bit more space here. I'm going to push these guys up a bit. Oop, not that much. So I want to add in a couple of parts. All right, so this is uh, the basic circuit. So I don't have yet the uh, positive feedback resistor, but this is the basic comparator circuit. Now we can run this. Obviously, this is only going to, uh, we would add a few more scopes, um, <clears throat> but this is the, the basic functionality. So all we need to do, we're going to uh, go ahead and add the resistor. So I'm going to type again, resistor. And uh, let's put that right there. And I'm going to attach that to this. And I'm not actually going to attach it directly. I actually want to, uh, I want to throw in a switch here. So we're going to go to library browser. We're going to back, go back down to these. <clears throat> under switches and breakers. Now I want a single pole, single throw. So this is just an, a simple on off switch. Now I want it uh, facing the other way just because you know, I've got more space over this way. So control I to invert. Oh yeah, closed resistance. So 0 0.2 ohms and control I to invert. 
And we're just gonna bring those close together. Move my diode. And then this is what I wanna connect. All right, it was at this point in the original recording, which is actually the second recording, that the uh, somehow the software started distorting the video. I kind of sounded like I was talking from the bottom of a can. So we're going to re-record this, and uh, hopefully I don't get some weird discontinuity. Hopefully it doesn't do it again. All right, so we've got our circuit. We've got our switch built in. So this is uh, we're going to add a, an actual feedback switch here soon. Not a feedback switch, but a switch to turn this feedback on and off. So I've got a, a Simscape model and a Simulink model, and I need to actually make the um, connection. So we need here a, a, a Simulink, Simulink to physical signal converter. And of course that's facing backwards. So control I to invert. We're just gonna drag this guy right in here. And we actually had those close enough that it connected. So you can see these are matched up. All right, so now we need to have a, a switch over here. So again, we're gonna do the very similar we're not going to use we're not going to use a little dial. We're just going to use a, a switch. So to get that, we're going to open up the library browser, and uh, we'll go down to Simscape. We're going to go down to Simscape Electrical. Let's scroll down a little further, and it will be under. Nope, I lied. This is a Simulink model, so it's a, under the dashboard, and we're going to use this nice little flippy toggle switch. So let's go ahead and bring that in. And let's move this guy over here. So again, it's the same process. We're going to double click on the unit itself. And it wants me to click on what it wants to connect to. Click connect and we're good. So now it has, so if I turn this on, so if it's in the off position, it's a zero. And in the on position, it's a one. So that means that this uh, threshold <clears throat> So that means this threshold of 0.5 volts uh, will be exceeded with just one. And so this will allow us in the actual real-time simulation, we can scroll up and down the voltage of the potentiometer from uh, 0 to 10K. And we can also turn the feedback on and off. So we can actually see the effect in real time of having the feedback resistor. All right, so now, so far we're only measuring one of the uh, 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 one of the terminals of the comparator. So I actually want to see the uh, V plus, V minus, and V out. And we're also going to measure current through this resistor, uh, or this resistor and diode slash LED. So let's start with uh, throwing, whacking in a uh, current sensor. So we can bring up, so now we want to go down to the Simscape model, the Simscape models. We're going to go to sensors and transducers. We want to add a current sensor. So we're going to just drag that guy over. And control R rotates, which is good because we want the flow going this way. And I want the signal coming out there. And I'm going to just go ahead and hit delete, even though it's going to yell at me. And connect that and then connect this guy back up. Line that up nicely. All right. So. I'm actually going to skip a part where I made a mistake earlier. So one of the things that we know is that this is going to be, it's going to be roughly 12 milliamps going through the, the sensor, the resistor, the diode, and eventually through the comparator and, and down to ground. So if I'm measuring everything else is going to be from zero to roughly nine, and I'm measuring something that's 0.012, it's going to be, a, it's going to, if, since it's going to be on the same scaling, it's going to look like a flat line. So I actually need to add some gain here, just kind of make it a little bit more visible. So not only do I need a, well, first off, I need some more scope. So I'm going to do the same trick. I press and hold the control button down and I left button and I just scroll it up and just do a copy. I'm going to actually give each one of those a little bit more space. So it's a little bit more readable. And so I also am going to change these names. So that's not V minus two. This is actually going to be I underscore load. And this one is actually going to be V plus. Place plus. And this last one is going to be V, my, or v out. So just put as an O. 
All right, so I need, so I'm going to type in the, so I need to go from a physical signal to a simulink signal and uh, control R to rotate. So I'll point that down just to save space. Come on, line up. There you go. So I also want to have gain. So I'm going to open up the library browser. I'm going to go up to the commonly used box under simulink and I'm going to introduce some gain here. And of course, this is a uh, we want to control R. And we'll just kind of slip that in there. And that connects to that. And that connects to that. And we want to change that from one. We're going to change it to 500. A thousand will actually increase the scale overall. And it's just uh, so we're just going to do 500. So in order to figure out what the current is on the actual scale, you'll just divide by 500, and that will be in milliamps. No, oh, it'll be it'll be in amps, but it'll be like 0 0.012 or something like that. All right, so I need to measure the V plus and the V out. So to do that, I'm going to put a little sensor over here. So again, I could just bring up the volt, the uh, library browser, scroll down here, go to sensors and transducers, scroll down and grab a voltage sensor. Or uh, I could also just left click type voltage sensor and click that so we'll just kind of right I'm going to use that one there uh, either way that works so this one I want to change the orientation I want this on top and I want this on bottom and I want it to lay down on its side so see if I can do this we're going to do control I to invert then control shift R to go count counterclockwise perfect let's go ahead and connect that wire and then I need another ground, so I'm just going to do the control and drag. Just throw that up here. Yeah, that's not that's not in the way. It's not too confusing. Oh, apparently I need a little bit more space. All right, so now I want to get this signal, this physical signal, down to this simulink signal. So I could click a wire and just kind of drag that, but you know, then you know, I got wires kind of crossing. And it looks a little... Uh, it can be confusing, and I might accidentally connect something that shouldn't. So there are things called go-tos. So you can see I've already searched for it. So this is a, a go-to and a from pair. And so I'm going to uh, slide this guy over. And of course, this is a Simulink model, and it's turning yellow because it, it's it's lonely. It doesn't have its from pair. Uh, so we also need to type in a... So I'm going to go from physical signal to Simulink. Type that, drag that in line, connect that, connect that. So I also want to change this label so it makes sense to me. So I'm just going to call this uh, V underscore plus. And so I could actually go through the same thing. I can I can you know hop the browser. And I can snag the from. Uh, but another kind of fun way, so I can actually just pull it right out of the other one. So right like that. Why aren't you lining up? Play nice. There we go. And and that's how you connect it. So this is basically uh, it's not you know it's it's kind of think of like a little wireless connection. Uh, so it's just a logical connection. Uh, so whatever signal goes through here gets transmitted over here. And it's just a way to keep things a little neat and tidy. And lastly, we want to connect this. So I don't want wires crossing again, so I'm going to hit control I to invert, and I'm going to connect there. Now I'm just going to snag a ground, and so control, slide it over, connect the wires, and straighten that out, make that look a little nicer. Come on, there. And again, uh, I need to make the uh, uh, same different conversion. And in this case, we're going to cross wires just because, I don't know, this is the third time I'm doing the vi uh, video, and I'm feeling lazy. So we're going to go physical, physical signal to Simulink. And we're just, going to actually, we're just going to drive this guy all the way down here. And connect that. And connect that. All right. So I've got four individual scopes. And you can, uh, we're going to see a reason why we do that in uh, just a second. So I've got the entire circuit built. Uh, I think I want to go through here. That's that's 100 kilo ohms. I made that mistake before. That's been fixed. That's good. That's 47500. Good, 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 good. 
switch that, 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 50s are both 10. Yeah, it's 10K, and I just slid that over, so that's good. Well, so this is uh, also a cheat. No, I already talked about that, I think. All right. Uh, maybe I didn't talk about this in the video. All right, so one of the things, this uh, was originally set to 9 volts, uh, so the output should be 9 volts, and in theory, because of this voltage drop, this is, should drop the uh, you know, the actual 9 volts VCC down by the voltage drop of this LED. Well, well diode. So it's, it has 2.4 volts, and it should figure out that it shouldn't drop, it shouldn't actually output 9 volts, but it should drop, uh, it should output 6.4 or 6.6. .6. But it didn't, so we're just going to go ahead and cheat. Um, so we'll actually save a little bit of time in the video as well. We'll click OK. So this will actually, uh, you know, it's, it's what happens physically in the circuit that, in the previous video. And so this will actually output the volt, the, the correct voltage swing. And uh, all right, that's the only other caveats. And uh, so let's see. I also want to change some of these scope settings. So we're going to change this. Um, I'm also going to skip this step because originally in the video, uh, I, you know, uh, went through and, and brought these all up and said, oh, hey, I need to do some data logging. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and do that. So I don't want actually current uh, scope to pop up when I run the simulation. And I also want to do logging. So basically what this does is that whenever, um, so the, the outputs uh, of these, they're not that great. Uh, and it's a little bit of a pain to switch the background colors. So this will actually allow us to uh, basically log the outputs from the scopes. And what we'll do, we'll uh, bring it into uh, MATLAB, and we're going to write a short little script that will create a really nice looking figure, something that's actually publishable. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and cut through the uh, couple little steps that I did in the, uh, the original video that got kind of, um, I don't know, robot, roboticized. It just sounded, it just sounded weird. And so anyway, so we're going to go ahead and we want to log these. So we're going to log the data to workspace. And then I'm going to change this. I'm going to call it I dash load, just so it has a name. And I want to keep this as an array. And we'll click OK. Oh, shut up. You and your underscores, MATLAB. I guess it looks like a minus sign. So I guess it makes mistake. It makes sense, but eh, still. All right, so now we're just going to go through and click the other one. So settings, I actually do want this one to pop up when the simulation starts. And logging, this one is, uh, what was this one? V plus. Just going to call it V underscore plus. And I want to save that as an array, so we'll click OK. Next, V minus, settings. And I do want this to pop open when I run the simulation because I actually want to see how it's working. And I'm going to change it to logging. Oh, sure, that one keeps that. V minus and as an array. OK. Close that. Oh, that's right, because we already did that. And change settings. Uh, v out. Eh, I don't really care. It's going to I mean, be binary. So you're going to be close to 0 or 6.6. .6. Uh, logging, of course. And I want to make sure that's checked. And change this to V O, lowercase o. Change, save that as an array, and click OK. And close that. Now I can run the simulation. So I run the simulation, it'll actually, you know, the, these, the V plus and V minus will pop up. Actually, I want to give a little bit of space, so I'm going to uh, move the window a little uh, over. And so those will, two will, uh, will pop up, but the other, four, all four signals will actually be logged. And you'll actually see uh, pop up here. Uh, it'll save it as an out. So let's go ahead and run it. I can't remember. Did I change that to 30 seconds? No, we'll find out. Yeah, I did. All right. Oh, well, they're on top of each other, so that nah, doesn't matter. So we'll just... That should be auto-scaling. Maybe I didn't set it to auto-scaling. Anyway, so we want to make sure... Oh, and our feedback, we need to turn, turn that on. So that should switch. I might have to do this again. All right, let's see what the, uh... all right, so it looks like we got a couple transitions. So we got a little uh, wiggly there in between the transitions. 
So let's just assume our data looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, all right. So now you can see it's actually logged. We have one variable. This is actually a big grouping. Uh, so to actually open that up, we'll just uh, double click it. So I've got my four scope readings and then I've got the timeout. So this is just a, a single column, whereas the other ones were two columns. So if I click the I load, this is the same time column and then this is the data column. So uh, in order to uh, write a script, click home, click new script. And so I want to go back here. I want to use this as my, I want to write this as a variable. So I don't have to write out dot t out and uh, the various stuff. So I don't have to do that over. So I'm just going to write in the script, write time equals out dot t out. And I want all the rows in column one. And I could write variables for, for the rest of them. I could write a variable for, um, for example, the load, the V minus, V plus, and V out. But since I'm only going to be writing this once, um, I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, so I'm just going to, let's just go ahead and close that one. So let's just go right from top to bottom. Let's actually do load plus minus and V out. So not quite. So if I double click on that, you can see this is the time and this is the data. So the current is really just going to be between zero and, uh, yeah, well, 6.34. So the actual output is going to be uh, about 12 and a half milliamps. So I want the data in column two. Let's go back to my script. I want to plot, I want to plot time with reference to out.i underscore load. I want all the rows in column two. And I want to click hold on. So the hold on function will actually, uh, MATLAB will actually uh, graph each, uh, each plot in its own little square, its own little graph. So if I did all four of these without the hold on, it will, I would have four separate graphs. I actually want this all on one. So the hold on, it, it prevents it from opening up a, a new plotting window. And so it'll plot it all in the same, uh, same single window. So next is plot. I want to do time in reference to, let's go back here. We've already done that. So I want to do V plus again, the time in the first column and the data in the second column. So I want out and dot V underscore plus. I want all the rows in column two. And I still want to have hold on. I want to do plot time with respect to out dot. I already know what it is, but we're, let's uh, go through the step. So I want to do V minus. So it's going to be out V underscore minus. So V underscore minus all the rows column two. Now, oh, see, I've already forgotten. Uh, see, it's telling me I've got an error and I'm completely ignoring it. All right, so we still want to hold on. We've got one more to so hold on. Plot time with respect to out dot. I already know what this one is, so we'll just cheat and move on. All the rows in column two, second close parentheses. Hold off. Two words. All right, so let's see. let's see. It doesn't look like I have any mistakes. So let's just go ahead and run the script. And uh, so you can see there's plot video, plot video two. So this, we're going to call this plot video three. Plot video three. So I guess the advantage of doing this multiple times is uh, I get pretty good at it. <laughs> sure. All right, so this is the single plot. Now you can see uh, what we're really focusing on is this, these two middle uh, waveforms. So this is going to be uh, this is v plus, and this one is v minus, and the other ones is going is going to be v out, and then the current. I believe the blue is the current, uh, but this isn't really you know this isn't something I would want to publish. Like there's there's no title, there's no axes titles, uh, there's no grid, there's no legend, there's just a whole lot of data that's missing. So, of course, you know, it's not going to do it for us because, you know, we, we want our own format. So we want to first view property window. 
this is going to be the window that will allow us to you know alter all the various characteristics and i also want to plot the browser view the plot browser so this is just a nice convenient way of switching in between them uh, you don't really need this but you you know sometimes it's a pain to actually click the right one so we're start, first going to start with the act we're first going to start with the large overall window and uh, let's start with the title. So this is gonna be comparator with and without. Yeah, it'll probably be capitalized. With and without hysteresis. I'm an engineer, I can't spell things. Let's see, I also wanna change the background color so it's a little less contrast. I, pers I personally like this one. It's a nice, I don't know, khaki color. I also want to add grid, so I'm going to click these two X, Y, and boxes down here. Now the X uh, column, or the, the, the X axis rather, should have a label. So this one is time. Unit is seconds. Seconds. Then I want the Y axis. So this one is kind of complicated. This was one where, you know, since I've got voltage for three and current for one, um, so we can do voltage volts for, uh, what would you call it? V underscore plus V underscore minus and V out. And then we're going to do current amps, actually amps divided by 500. And that's going to be I underscore load. So this isn't going to be terribly pretty. This is, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Silly underscore. So let's just do dash. This is just the title. MATLAB shouldn't scream at us. And uh, I dash load. There we go. I don't want that subset or subscript. All right. So that's the overall. And now we can just go to which one. Uh, so we just basically want to add a name to this and then we can uh, change the th thickness and the color of the line and so the way that you can tell which one's which either you know your circuit or you know your outputs uh, or you can just recognize that hey you know this is the order you plotted it in and this is the same exact order from top to bottom so the first one is going to be the uh, i load and so i'm going to change the name to i you know, let's still keep dash load and uh, since I'm more interested in the V out and V minus, uh, I'm just going to leave this at the 0.5 so it'll, it won't be as prominent. It won't be as, um, yeah, as prominent. And so I'm going to go to the next one. This one is going to be, this is V plus, then it goes V minus V out. So this one I want to change this to V underscore, nope, dash plus. And this one, I actually want to change to thickness of 1.5. So that's going to make it a bit more prominent, so it'll stand out. And next one is going to be V minus, V dash minus. And I also want to change this to 1.5. And the last one is going to be V out, or V O. Oops, I missed V O. And again, I'm going to keep that at 0.5, so it's a... Uh, I don't want that to be as prominent. The idea is to look at the uh, how the actual signal is changing. All right, so I also want to, let's see. All right, so this is looking pretty good. And so I also want to insert a legend. Since I already have it all labeled, it should just pop right up. And we're just gonna throw this kind of off in the corner. Uh, we're not really obscuring important data. So, you know, anybody can extrapolate that it's continuing to uh, do the same thing. Uh, what we're, again, what we're really looking at is the V minus and V plus. Also, I want to add a line because you can tell here, ah, right, at, right at 15 seconds uh, is when I flip the switch. So I want to insert, we're going to insert a line just to kind of uh, bifurcate and... Uh, you can stand out a little bit more, see if I can actually make this straight. That looks pretty good. And I think I'm going to make this uh, 1.5, so that stands out a little bit more than the axes. 
That looks pretty good. Then I want to insert a uh, text box. So I'm going to toss this guy over here. And then feed back on. And so I need to change the size of that box a little bit. That's that. So it's just touching. So it's kind of, uh, hopefully it should be obvious that this line is the point in which I turn that feedback on. So uh, if you're actually writing this to be published or uh, you're writing this in a report, and uh, so you would want to explain a little bit about what's going on in your graph, you would refer to this black line right in the middle at, at time 15 seconds. And say so this is the point in which you uh, turn switch on that uh, activates the, uh, or uh, activates the, feedbacks uh, resistor. And also one of the things that's nice to do here, like you can see like this graph, maybe what you want to do is uh, really show a little bit of detail. Like let's say I want to um, emphasize this to show how the uh, threshold actually drops below the previous one, but still doesn't re-trigger it. It actually has to drop below it. So what we'll, we're going to do, I'm going to insert, first I'm going to insert a rectangle and I'm going to do that. I'm going to estimate it from is that about time 25 and probably about, now yeah, I'll say time 28, roughly. And then it'll be from 4 to 5 on the uh, y axis. So, actually, let me, uh, let's actually delete that first. Yeah, stop yelling at me. All right, so. I want to go up and I want to want to copy and then I want to paste. So with this, I'm going to just so I can make sure I select the right things. I'm gonna slide this guy up a little like that, select the title and delete it. Select the axis, delete it. Select that axis, delete that. And now I want to change the scale. So the uh, X axis, I want to go from, I think I said 25 to 28. Let's actually make that 29. So I want to go from t time 25 to 29. All right, and then the Y axis, I think I said, uh, uh, I should make it 3.9 all the way up to 5. All right, so now that, oh, I should really didn't get as much as I wanted. Yeah, I think I'm going to need to change the x-axis to 30. No, actually, I need to change this to 24. Yeah, there we go. So I would actually show kind of both switching, and that only when it transitions below does it actually switch back. All right, now the idea is that this takes up a portion of my screen, but not the whole thing. So it's basically like I, I want to draw attention to that. So I'm going to move this guy down here. It's actually a little, still a little bit big. Now I could also, come on. So I still think that should be distinctive. I think that's pretty good. All right, so I still want to draw that rectangle. Let's do uh, insert, oops, rectangle. And that was roughly here to about there. I should drop it down a little bit. And then I also want to make sure that, you know, people make the connection between this and that this is uh, basically a blown up view. So I want to insert, I want to insert an arrow. Draw this from that point to there. All right, so this is a. So these are all the things that you can do with this. I'm sure there's a bunch of things you can do more for drawing a very nice data output uh, for our circuit. Uh, this is something that, you know, the quality, I mean, you might want to change things like this is, I don't know, the, my instinct tells me this is too much information here. Uh, really, what I should do maybe 
is um, I should just have the current load and maybe the output voltage on a separate graph. Uh, that might be a better way to clean it up. So I'm not, it's not like data overload. You know, my legend is large. And uh, so really what I want to focus on is the switching characteristics, not necessarily the outputs. So maybe uh, I would change that. But this is really just to, uh, as a, a demonstration to show you all the things that you can do. So, uh, so now that we have that, we want to be sure that we save it. So I want to save this as, again, not comp video. So I'm going to put this in this particular folder. I'll go to my fall 2020, MATLAB simulations, compare to basics video. And uh, you can save it as a MATLAB figure. Uh, that's actually probably not a bad idea because I think you can then go back and edit it. Let's say you forgot a little detail or you made a, a mistake. Uh, it makes it easier. So let's go back through the whole process. I think I'm going to call this video three underscore plot. And I'll save that as a MATLAB figure, but I also want to save it as a just a regular picture file. So I'm going to do PNG, and you can see I've already done that a couple of times. So I'm going to call this video three plot, and I'm going to save. So that will allow us to, you know, uh, we can actually open up Word document. So if we're writing a report, uh, writing up a, a paper for a publication, we can actually just import it nicely, and we'll see insert. Picture, device, and scroll down to the, where did I put it? This guy, Penn State, Fall 2020, MATLAB Simulations, Comparator, and Video Plot 3, Insert. And there you have it. That is a very nice example of something that you could find in a published article. And again, you know, you would want to clean this up. Like, like my suggestion would be to uh, separate out the V out and the I load and put those in a different graph and then really focus on the operation and emphasize how, you know, the uh, only once you cross the threshold once uh, does it, uh, does the output change. And uh, here we have the Schmidt trait. And so here we turn on the hysteresis resistor and you see we now generate two separate thresholds. So once it, it rises above the one threshold, it actually drops the threshold down. So then it has to actually drop below that, that new threshold and then back and forth. Well, I hope this video was helpful. I hope everybody um, actually uh, finds Simscape a lot more user friendly. Certainly figuring out some of the uh, details like the how to convert from one to another and why you do that is a whole lot more helpful. I know when I first used this, I found it really frustrating. Like, you know, all I want to do is connect dots, uh, but you don't realize that there's a whole lot more to it than that. There are some YouTube videos out there, uh, but I thought I would go through the entire process and uh, also do a simulation of a project I've already built. All right. I uh, hope that was helpful.